culture swap. Swap my culture. So, spooky, spooky, horror, Halloween, blah. We're Do d- you remember, Liam? Yeah. What our plan was for this for this Halloween special. Yeah, the plan was you came up with this idea, and I, th- I thought it was great. Yeah, I think yeah, I thought you were saying that to sort of like blame me, and I was no, like, I thought it was a good idea. It was a, it was a great idea. You wanted to do a modern horror film. So you could talk yep. about everything that was wrong with modern horror films. So that we we could talk about, not me. Okay, yeah, we. I thought you I thought you would be more of a sort of expert because like horror is your forte. Yeah, um, I would say great idea. I had seen this film before. Okay, I haven't. Yeah, this was the first um, time. so I kind of knew it definitely does a couple of things, right? That that fall, that that kind of work with our initial concept. But I yeah, think... it's it's got some of the jump scares in there. Yeah, something like Insidious would have played better for if, if we wanted to go all in on just like really deconstructing why modern horror doesn't work but yeah because because what we accidentally did was watch a really good horror film that's the thing i did want to kind of watch a movie that would actually be decent that's fair that's fair but i think it i think this film yeah struggles to fall into the tropes like it does it a couple of times yeah but it does it so little that it's not falling into the trope because it's using it properly, which is, you know, jump scares work. Jump scares are scary if you only use them a few times. Yeah, exactly. So and this film doesn't rely on them and is very good about, like, sort of almost building up to the jump scare by completely faking you out for, like, half the film. Yeah. So, okay, so the movie we're talking about is The Conjuring. We mentioned it at the beginning. If you were paying attention, if you were observant, you'd know that. But, hey. It's like a riddle. Um, There's going to be spoilers. We're going to... Sculpture yep. always do spoil this, but if you're a first-time listener, just a heads up, we'll spoil the movie. Um, Jack, please provide a brief plot synopsis. Uh, a family called the Perrins, they are experiencing a haunting. They call in two paranormal experts to come and uh, sort of solve it, to fix the family, and then we follow them as they try to resolve the haunting. Well, is it a haunting? Well, yeah, that's part of it, though. They think they're being haunted. The Warrens come in to try and fix it. Yeah. Um, so straight off the bat, I think the first half is a lot better than the second half. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those it, It's one of those films where once you see the monster, yeah, it becomes less scary. And they, they do try and mix it up. There's a couple of different, like, um, monsters, if you will, loosely yeah, using yeah, the term. Uh, Lorraine Warren. So this is these are real people as well. Lorraine yeah. Warren and Ed Warren are two real paranormal investigators yeah. from like the eighties who went and I think were quite famous for going to the biggest hauntings and trying to help. Yeah, like the Amateurville Horror is um, yeah. theirs essentially. But we're not we're not going to be talking about you know them specifically whether it's real or not because it's not. But you know, well we haven't really done them. the research into it, have we? Well, go something real. Anyway, um, Lorraine Warren in this film is a clairvoyant who can speak to the dead and see the dead and she at one point in the film says to them your house is like severely haunted there are lots of spirits here yeah but there is one particularly bad one it's almost like the Hellmouth in buffy yes yeah it's like, yeah, this... like you've got a shit ton of ghosts the, there are too many ghosts here yeah it's like this is this like site here is a place that just keeps attracting bad stuff to happen to it yeah which I think is probably because the bad ghost or well demon yeah is making people die and then they're becoming ghosts there exactly and then the the other thing as well is um what I thought was quite interesting was when they were like well we'll just move that nah this entity has latched onto your family so anywhere you go it's coming with you yeah I, yeah I liked as well because there's a bit at the beginning where they I think even before they say that the the Ed Warren is like, oh, well, why don't you just move out? Which yeah. is the question everyone asks in these films. Yeah. And the dad says, who is going to buy this house? We don't have money to move. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's like a reasonable answer. Yeah. Um, so the dad is played by Ron Livingston. And he's so good. He's in so many things. And he just never seems to age. I don't know who else he is. I know he's the dad in this. Uh, he's in a film called Drinking Buddies, which is a mumblecore film that I want you to watch because I actually think you'll enjoy it. Okay. Um, he's also in Office Space, which is a real, like, famous movie from yeah i know so i've never seen it but i know i know that it's very famous yeah um that's probably his like most famous role oh i've seen him in other stuff i'm looking at some pictures are popping up where i'm recognizing him yeah you know you know him when you see it yeah sometimes it's not easy to necessarily put a name to his face got you got you but he just never seems to age i suppose is he a vampire do we think he's a vampire is that what we're saying yeah you heard it here first ron livingston vampire yeah bit like um keanu reeves yeah, there's a whole clan of them. All of Hollywood have vampires. Conspiracy Theory Corner is finished. Cool. Um, the other thing about this movie that I was pleasantly surprised by is the children 
are actually quite good actors. Yes, they're believable. Yeah. Also, it has Joey King, who, um, oh, she's brilliant. She she was in a Taylor Swift music video for the song Mean. Okay. And any time she appears in the film, I'm just like, ah, I can relax. I know that I'm not going to get like a shitty child performance. I mean, I I think you know none of the kids were. No, no, all of them were good. Yeah. Yeah. The, so the only thing I didn't really like about this movie in in the first half is I felt like the stuff with the Annabelle doll felt kind of shoehorned in. Yeah, well, I didn't realise how quick... Like, I don't know why, but I've in my head, the way I've always sort of imagined or thought, you know, with very little research, yeah. thought that The Conjuring went was Conjuring 1, 2. Nope. Then they span off into Annabelle. Nope. But actually, Annabelle is the second film. Yeah, and then you've got The Conjuring 2, and then you have Annabelle creation. Yeah, so I didn't realise, like... I didn't even realise that Annabelle would be in this film. And then, so went right at the beginning, you know, you get the chunk of Annabelle. I was like, oh, wait, I see. They were, like, setting this up from the beginning. Yeah, it's just... It feels like the director, right, James Wan, had this idea for the Annabelle thing, but he knew it was it wouldn't stretch to a whole film. So it was like... It, it, it would have worked brilliantly as a short, but he just didn't want to kind of give this idea up. So he just crammed it into this film. And... It, Honestly, it doesn't really fit in with the bulk of the plot, I don't think. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, but it also, like, it's, it's not a huge sore thumb in that they explain Annabelle into the story. Yeah, it just because weird. it's the, she's, because there's some sort of, like, the, the real demon, the main demon, yeah. is possessing Annabelle, right? And that, that demon is, like, getting other things, other ghosts and stuff to fuck with people. That's, like, the interpretation I was getting from it. Because at the end you have Annabelle, because the demon's like, I can get your daughter, and then it's Annabelle that does that. Yeah. Yeah, I I just don't I don't think the 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 Annabelle stuff is is that no, related no, no. to the house stuff. Well, no, it, it is it is related, but I don't think it I don't think it worked super well. But no. I, I didn't mind it because they gave me an explanation. But I I think the film would have been better without the Annabelle stuff. Okay. But, you know, like, so long as they can explain it to me, I'm always going to give it a bit more of a... Like, I my least favourite thing is when... Not necessarily horror films, but any film chucks some bullshit in and then, deli- like, just ignores it. Yeah. So at least this film attempted to explain the Annabelle stuff. Okay. So I was a bit more okay with it. But I do agree. I think it would have been a better film if they had just skipped Annabelle. Yeah. Or left it just at that beginning scene. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because, like, that, that scene is quite good, that whole intro. Yeah, that is creepy. And I, I thought they were just setting up the Warren family... But actually, it ends up being more, but still. What was, for you, do you think, the creepiest moment in this film? Uh, the, the one that, like, sticks in my mind the most yeah. is... I think it's I think it's Christine and... Oh, I can't remember the kids' names because there's, like, six of them. Yeah. Um, Two of the girls are in their room. I think it's the same as my one, then. Yeah, so it's the one where she's getting pulled out of bed yeah. a lot. Yeah, And then she sits up and she looks in the corner... And there's this whole scene where she's just staring there and the other girl daughter wakes up and yeah. is like, what are you doing? And she's like, can you see it? It's just there. And there's just nothing there. Yeah. And that was, that's like the spookiest thing for me. Yeah, and it doesn't it's help. It's weird, I don't... right? That, like, I totally agree. That's the creepiest thing. And you don't even see anything. No, and nothing happens. Like the door slams and then the dad opens it and the girls are just there. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. And it, it, that, so the, the actress that is doing that whole like, can't, can you see it? There's a thing there. That's Joey King. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. And the, the reason why that that moment works is purely down to her performance. Oh yeah, no, she 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 does the I'm seeing something and it is terrifying really well. Yeah, that that was my that that scene kind of got under my skin. Um, oh yeah, no, it's just the way it builds up with the other girl walking over. Yeah, and and then she's just like it's right behind you. And I think that's Ugh. that's the perfect example of modern horror doing something right. Okay, because. Yeah, like like you were saying, you, we've had a couple of the moments before where there's the jump scares and, and whatnot. So you're kind of on edge, almost anticipating something, and then what does happen is just a door slams, and yeah, it's a bit yeah, of a don't... lazy scare because I I my like pet peeve with modern horror is um, I think Mark Kermode references this a lot where he'll, he'll be like the quiet, quiet, quiet bang. Yeah, yeah. And modern horror just relies on that way too much. But I feel like even if you didn't have the door slamming, that scene would work really well. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, and it's not a jump scare in the like when I picture like a jump scare, the annoying kind. Yeah, it's the quiet, quiet, quiet bang. But the bang is like the fucking. Do you remember the old prank on the computer where you watch yeah, the, number, the car down, and, and then a big face. creepy face jumps at you? Yeah, like I feel like without that that actual 
visual element as well yeah. it's not quite as bad it's not yeah. the same almost makes sense do you know yeah I, I think i think that makes sense but yeah that 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 scene i have i think i've probably mentioned on the show before but my younger brother used to have uh night terrors yeah do you know about night terrors liam they're like nightmares they're a little bit like nightmares except imagine that when you're having a nightmare you physically get up walk around talk to people as if you are living the nightmare and that's what a night terror is that sounds awful yeah so her sitting up looking into the corner and being like can you see that is even more horrifying because my brother used to do shit like that oh no i wouldn't like that and not lying he would just be seeing shit in the corner yeah, I think I would have had to have um, like pressed a pillow over my brother's face if he was doing that. <laughs> I used to just lie there and not talk because I'd hear him get up and I'd go, "Oh shit, he's having a night terror," and I don't, I cannot be dealing with fear, so I'll let him go and talk to dad. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, that scene was really good, and also just the, the way that they shot like the leg being pulled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it was quite good, but the the other bit that gets to me is the clap game. Yeah, so you, you, when I started watching it, I messaged you and said, or we were talking and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm about to watch it. Yeah. And you said, get ready for the clap game after yeah. I had been a little bit freaked out by something else. Yeah. And so which specific clap game are you talking to? The one where you actually see the hand? Yeah, the one with the mum's playing it. Yeah, because that is horrifying. Like, yeah. the clap game itself is terrifying because you know yeah. that they're going to use it. What is it, right, with these sort of films where the kids in them play just the creepiest fucking games ever because there's another one in um a film called the orphanage have you seen that i don't think so where essentially you you face away and i think you close your eyes and you kind of count uh to three or something and then you turn around and the kids are trying to get close enough to you to touch you oh like like what's the time mr wolf yeah it's a lot like that yeah yeah um but that in a horror movie setting is just fucking terrifying yeah, the the thing with it is, anything that is... I think there's an aspect of, like, things that you used to play as a child, which are innocently fun and not creepy, become a lot more... I th- it almost feels like the movie is taking those fond memories you had, right, of this just really innocent, fun game you used to play. Yeah. And then sort of, by make by adding that sort of, oh, God, something horrible is going to happen, you're sort of associating it with what you used to do and what you used to be like, almost. Yeah, I guess. Does that make sense? So, yeah. like, you're seeing this just these kids having fun. Like, because the clap game, that's yeah. the kind of thing that if it wasn't associated with this film, I could see playing with a kid and being like, oh, yeah, fuck it. There's this thing called the clap game that's just, it's like hide and seek. Yeah. But it's or Marco just Polo. Terrifying. But it becomes terrifying when you add the element of there is also a ghost playing and that ghost is not going to be nice to you. No. Because, yeah, the, that bit was, I thought, it was, I don't know why, but the fact that you actually see the hand. Yeah. So basically, she's, the mum's playing and she's blindfolded and she. Every time someone claps, you walk towards the claps yeah. and you have to try and catch the person. Yeah. And the mum's trying to get her daughter. It's only the mum and the daughter playing. Yeah. The daughter goes and hides somewhere. The mum starts asking for claps and it's coming from a cupboard. Yeah. Which you know the daughter isn't in. But then you specifically see these tiny little ghost hands come out, like yeah. creep out from behind coats and just clap. And I don't know why, but seeing the hands in that moment freaked me the fuck out. Yeah, definitely. I th- it definitely makes it a lot scarier for some reason and it, it's yeah, one of those yeah. interesting moments right because we were saying earlier when you actually see the thing it it stops being scary but that because you don't see all of it it yeah. still works it's almost like the uh ali- the way alien does it where yeah. you're you're seeing bits of the monster but you don't ever see the whole monster exactly so it's that doesn't detract from it yeah and then for me this film just sort of loses it when the older sister sees the old lady like on top of the wardrobe Yes, that is exactly the moment that I would also pin the, like, oh, now I know what's happening, I'm a little bit less scared. Yeah, exactly. There's still, like, you know, creepy moments and jumpy moments, like the scene where um, Lorraine Warren is kind of, yep. like, she's experiencing what's happened in the house, and she goes outside, and she's by a tree, and you see yes, these two yep. feet hanging. Yeah, it's when she's talking to Ed, and then you're getting it from his perspective, of yeah. him being like, what are you seeing? And then it cuts to her and there are just dead feet hanging behind him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good bit. Um, but yeah, like, you see a few of the kind of ghosts in it. And one, as soon as you see him, it's just that. Nah. Yeah, that's the thing. Ghosts are terrifying. Like, the idea of ghosts are terrifying. But yeah. in a film, there's an element of, I'm just seeing a person and I know they're on that screen. So it's not yeah. even like... I think... I don't know. I think The Sixth Sense did ghosts well. In that you see them and they're still quite creepy. 
Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, but I don't know if that's because you are seeing them from like a, a child's perspective almost. And I, I, I don't know why that one works more successfully than this one does. Yeah, I don't know. My, my like, I've always said the films that scare me the most are ghost children yeah. and children in scary situations. Those are the two things that fuck me up the most. Yeah. And I don't know what the association with it is. But even then, like this one, it almost didn't. I think because you're not getting it from the kid's perspective a lot, like a lot of it is from yeah, the was, Warren's perspective yeah. or the two parents. Yeah. So there's almost, even though the kids are involved, it's less spooky. Because like we said, the, our, our scariest moment is from the kid's perspective, the, the two daughters. Yeah, definitely. So it is. There's, almost, there's this weird element of like an adult experiencing it is less creepy. I don't know why. No. The other, the other creepy thing as well is that fucking music box that you look in the mirror. Oh, because it's such a good build up of like... Yeah. And then, especially, is it the, when the mum does it and she doesn't see anyone? Yeah. Like, ah, oh, it's a, a fucking, such a build-up, and then just you're waiting for it, and nothing happens. Yeah. The, I am disappointed that we didn't watch this movie together in the dark. Yeah, I, you had asked me to turn my lights off to see how long I lasted. Yeah. I did not do that, but I did inform you that I would have lasted about a minute. Yeah, whereas if we'd have watched it together, I would have insisted that the lights stay off. I would have been less scared watching it with someone else. I, I'm less scared if I'm in a room with someone. Do you think? Yeah, I am. Okay. If I'm alone, I've got no... Like, if it was me and you watching it, yeah. I feel like, even if we weren't, you know, because when we watch films, we don't particularly talk a lot. No, we don't. But I would probably, you know, occasionally be like, the fuck's that about? Or whatever. And that would diffuse it a little bit for me. Okay, yeah. When I'm alone, I don't have that outlet. So That's I have true. to... I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh God, I'm just terrified and I can't make a witty joke because I'm just alone. Yeah. Well, you never know. You could you could make a, a witty joke and if something else laughs, then you've got to be worried. I start playing the clap game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, is there anything that you th- felt anything else that you felt this film didn't do right? Uh, I mean, ap- you know, apart from the it's not even a pitfall, just the sort of annoying thing that these horror films do, where they say based on a true story. Yeah. Like uh, that always annoys me because I I want to believe in ghosts, but fully don't. No one has ever given me sufficient evidence to prove that ghosts are real. Yeah. I'd love it if they were because the idea of them, whilst terrifying, is also like cool. But so, well, you know, then, then a, film, then, a then film's that, like, whoa. Do you think if, if they were real, that would kind of, um, what's the word, uh, verify an, an afterlife of sorts? No, not necessarily. You know, the the pseudoscience of most ghosts comes from like loads of different things and not necessarily an afterlife. But aren't ghosts meant to be like spirits that are trapped and can't escape? No, from that's them? like the most rudimentary grasp of what these people say about ghosts. Like now it's, you know, there's all the bullshit of like... Uh, there's e- energy storage or something where you like the ghost isn't an entity that's like actively thinking it's almost like a memory being replayed because their energy sort of infused the area that kind of bullshit okay but also these so a lot of ghosts it... were they they were demons well there was a demon uh, no no they, no, no, no there, there are ghosts it's just that there's a demon that's over like ruling over it all so obviously with your massively religious upbringing that we got into oh, yeah, a couple of episodes back yeah, yeah. when we talked about blankets yeah. Uh, how do you feel about demons? Demons aren't that spooky. Really? But having an yeah. activity with demons. Yeah, that's the thing. If a demon is being ghost-like or poltergeisty, right? Then that's spooky. But if but it is think... like, um, like a cenobite, for example, are they the ones from uh, Pinhead and yeah. whatever it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those things they don't particularly scare me. But that's what that's what I mean. So like the traditional demon doesn't spook me out. Got you. The, I think the kind of demon in the Conjuring when they say demon. Even though they then have an exorcism and all that bullshit, yeah, like the idea of it to me is in my head I'm still like that's a ghost. It's I, not I did, it's just an evil ghost. I did like the fact that it felt like the Conjuring really didn't rely a lot on CGI. Yeah, no, that's true. It didn't, it, or it didn't feel like it did. Yeah, it? and that exorcism scene is a good example where they could have shown more than they did. But I think the restraint that they used there made it scarier. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I hope the acting was good, pretty much all around, especially the kids. They were really surprising. Yeah, I liked as well that we got a couple of funny moments. Such as? Uh, the the police officer that comes to help them and yep. the cameraman have a couple of interactions that are a little bit like... Jo- like Especially when, when ghost stuff starts happening because the policeman's very much like... Skeptic. Oh, no, I, I don't believe in ghosts. Yeah. You know, I'll help you, but I'm here to look after everyone. Yeah. And then, like, something happens and the cameraman just turns to him and he's like, yeah, so uh, you don't believe in ghosts? And he's like, yep, yeah, okay, I'm changing my mind. Yeah. Um, Patrick Wilson... Is an interesting. I like him as an actor. Don't get me wrong, but he was in this and he was in Insidious, and I sometimes get oh, really? get them confused because of that fact. 
Ah, and see, I haven't seen Insidious. Insidious, I think, is a good example of modern horror going wrong. Like, it shows yeah, you the demon way too soon. The demon looks like Darth Maul. Like, I'm sure you've seen an image of it. Uh, I think I have, yeah. Or I've heard people talking about it. Yeah, and it's just... It is honestly ridiculous. Yeah, because I, I think him and um, Vera Vermiga. Yeah. I think they did a good job. Like, I don't know. They They... I think, like you said, everyone in this film did a pretty decent job. I think. Yeah, it's just it. It seems weird to me, right? That you to cast would... him again. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, let me just check something as well, especially because Insidious is the same director. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. So uh, I, I don't understand why you would have those similarities. It's just odd to me. Yeah. No, that is that is really weird to, especially if it is the same director, just casting him. Yeah, he, he, the same. Is he is he a similar role in Insidious, or is he? Uh, I think it's more like the family person. But I honestly, it was a few years back. But okay. I think he's more like the father in Insidious than like a, you know, demony thing, like an expert. Um, director also directed Saw. James Wan. He di- oh, really? Yeah, okay. He directed Dead Silence. Haven't seen that. Uh, he did Insidious: The Conjuring, the Insidious Chapter Two. Uh, he did an, an uncredited scene in Annabelle. Um, he did The Conjuring 2, but do you know what else he did, which is going to maybe surprise you? Go on. Furious 7. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a... Co- after that sort of run of horror films. Yeah. That is quite a surprise. And do you know what he's currently directing, and it's kind of he's filming at the moment? Go on. Aquaman. Jesus. Well, he's got a quite... It's, well, I was going to say he's got a varied filmography, but he hasn't. He's suddenly become varied. Yeah. It, it, solid root in horror. Now yeah. he's diversifying. Yeah, no, that's, that's that is odd. Yep. I mean, I, even then, I guess if you look at the films that are on his list of horror films that he's done... Like, Saw is a great film. Yeah, but it's kind of weird, because, like, Saw is your traditional, like, torture porn. Yeah. For Insidious, from the sounds of it, is, you know... It's, it's the more modern. like The Conjuring, but it's not as good. But, yeah, but is like, the wrong kind of modern horror. Yeah. And then The Conjuring is actually good. Yeah, like, it's almost like he learned. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It is weird, though. It's a very... That's odd. I, I, I'm curious to watch The Conjuring 2 now. Less curious about Annabelle. Yeah, here's the thing. This is the way... I, after watching this film, and even though I found it scary in some places and was like, oh man, that spooked me out, I really want to watch the rest. I know Annabelle's yeah. not supposedly that good or anything, but I feel like I've got to watch it in order because re- I'm fascinated by things like the Enfield case, which is what The Conjuring 2 is based on. Yeah. Like I said, like I love the idea of ghosts, even though they are completely fictitious. Mm. So I always listen to like these, you know, like last podcasts on the left and stuff when they talk about these hauntings. Yeah. I find that fascinating. Okay. So I know a fair amount about the Enfield haunting. So I'm really interested to see Conjuring 2. Fair enough. Um, I'll have to watch Annabelle first though, just because of the way I have yeah, to do Yeah, same. Things. That's what I'm, yeah, I'm going to do that as well. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not like in a rush to watch Annabelle is the issue. See, I might because it's Halloween and I may as well. Um, it makes sense. Um, anything else that you want to add about the Conjuring? Uh, I'm trying to think if there was anything. Uh, no, not particularly. I, you know, I, it was good. I just liked. Yeah, it's, it's a good Halloween a movie, movie, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a good scary film. Yeah, um, it, and it I had a good time. Works well for our Halloween special. Yeah, it did. We we picked a good Halloween film. I would say if Amanda's listening, you don't want to watch this. No, yeah, Amanda, give this one a miss. Yeah, um, but anyone else, you could, you know, you could, you could w- watch worse, couldn't you? If you want to be spooked out by some ghosties, you could give The Conjuring a go. Perfect. Um, out of five? Uh, I want to say four. I think four. I'm going to go with three and a half. Fair enough. Uh, next time on Nerd on Nerd. We're doing Stranger Things Season 2. Just came out on Netflix um, recently. Yep. We're going to be watching it anyway, so we figured, hey, why not talk about it? You, yeah, you've... and since Amanda made us, you know, break our rule of watching things in a certain number of episodes and stuff. We're doing a we whole season. Realized, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that. So the whole season, but just season two. Yeah. So get ready for that. But so yeah, if you haven't seen season one or two, go watch them. Yeah, I you mean, idiots. you've already watched six episodes, haven't you? Season two. Yeah, I'm like near the end of season two. I've watched one episode. Yep. So you can expect a insightful, joyous discussion all about Hell yeah. Stranger Things. Season Classic two. nerd on nerd style, just deep, thoughtful talking. Yep, you know, we we figured why not keep this Halloween train a rolling? Spo- what, what really? What? Stranger Things? It's set up around Halloween, so, uh, or at least the episode I've seen so far. 
Yeah, yeah. It starts on October 28th, I think. The, yeah, the yeah, no, yeah. Um, so, you know, all aboard the Spooky Express. Boo boo. You can email us, nerdandnerdpod at gmail.com if you want to get involved. Very ent- get more enthusiastic, Liam. If you'd like to get involved in this discussion, look, right, you've probably watched Stranger Things Season 2 where you're currently watching it, okay? You don't have to have watched all of it. You can just email us and let us know what you think of what you've watched so far. Even, here's another idea. Maybe you haven't watched it. Email us, tell us why. Everyone's talking about it. Why aren't you? Email us, nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Please, tweet us, at nerdonnerd. If it will fit into 140 characters or less, unless you're one of these fancy people that gets 280 characters for some fucking reason, I don't know. Fuck YouTube. I'm sick of it. Um, Jesus. iTunes. Go rate us. No one has recently. So, why don't you? We'll read it out. It'll be real fun. We'll have a good good old time. Uh, Rate us high, please. Because, honestly, it's just mean and vindictive if you don't. Um, That's basically everything you need to know. Are you done? Yep. Any final thoughts, Liam? Yeah, 1,099. I don't know how that compares to last time, but whatever. (laughs) Fair enough. Bye. Bye.